And I don't host many opinions, right? Um, so I'm actually here to tell you a little bit about coronavirus and what's really happening inside of those hospitals. I've been a nurse for 27 years, critical care. My husband is a chiropractor. It's an interesting combination. I have the medical side and he has the holistic side. So together we're a pretty good combo meal. Um, however, in the hospitals back in March, I'm gonna bring you guys back to March. This virus was real. This virus killed people. This virus filled hospitals. And I saw things that I didn't see in 27 years of being an intensive care unit nurse. I pray to God I'd never see them again. Our hospitals were converted over into third world countries. We were taking care of people from the hallway. We didn't know what we were doing. Let me say that again. We didn't know what we were doing because this was a new virus. This was new. It was scary. It scared people. It scared me. And I don't get scared of viruses. I was afraid at first. I was afraid to go into the room. I was afraid that my PPE wouldn't work. I was afraid that I was gonna get sick and bring it home to my children. I was scared. And so were the rest of the nurses and doctors. But unfortunately, what happened from that virus in those hospital walls are things that none of you can actually imagine, except for maybe Senator Joe Panaccio. Joe Panaccio has been fighting for you for a medication called hydrochloroquine. He was fighting because he was right. His man. When has it become our governor's job to maintain our health? Somebody tell me. When has it been their job to get rid of a virus in your home? When did that happen that's not in their job description? However, the governor decided that no one was going to be using hydrochloroquine to treat this virus. So when you came into a hospital and you couldn't breathe and you were short of breath and you were begging us to help you, as a nurse, I had nothing to offer. I had no medication. I couldn't give you anything once the rules were set. That was a disgrace. That is why the hospital rates went up. That is why more people died unnecessarily because no one was able to get treatment. In my hospital, in the first two weeks of COVID, we did not have any ventilators, zero. Other hospitals were full and I couldn't understand what was going on. I was like, wait, do we just have a healthy population around here? Like what's going on? Then I came to find out that our emergency room physician, when you first came to the hospital, they would swab you for COVID and give you hydrochloroquine within minutes. What does that say? Is Facebook gonna make me disappear now too? Because it worked when it was used early. It worked, I watched it. Two weeks later, Governor Murphy decided that hydrochloroquine was not to be given until you had a positive corona test. However, the corona test did not come back for five days. Most of these people stood home for 14 because they thought, well, if I go to the hospital, they're gonna shove a tube down my throat and I am going to die. So they stayed home, they got sicker, they didn't look for treatment. And then they came to the hospital and we had to do nothing for five days. So when people say, oh my God, when you went to the hospital, all they did was put you on a ventilator, that irritates the crap out of me. You know why? Because it's just not true. When you watch someone not be able to breathe and you have a ventilator, putting them on one is the only option you have to save their life to prolong the time that they can breathe. But the thing was, we couldn't get them off once they were on. So, we also came to find out that really it wasn't a breathing problem at all. It was a clotting problem, right? So, we were treating them wrong. Closed down, right everybody? The world is still shut. The hospitals do not have COVID patients in them. We are full but we are full of very, very sick people that stayed home because they didn't want to die from coronavirus. 
So they stayed home with their cancer and their heart disease and their heart attacks and their strokes and everything else that they did while they were drinking alcohol and eating McDonald's because they were the only things that were open, they got sicker and sicker and sicker. So now we're full, but we're full of very sick people. Also, let me back up a quick second and just say this to you. Healthy people that just got off the treadmill never died of COVID. They were very sick people to begin with, with multiple comor comorbidities, and they were sick. Did you know that kids are not affected by this, other than maybe a sore throat and a fever? But back in the day when life was normal and we were real, no one cared if your kid in the middle of summer had a fever and a sore throat. You're like, hey, you've been swimming for three days, go to bed. Right? All right. So, but now when you have a fever and a sore throat, you have to quarantine for 14 days? For what? I'm from Middletown. How many of you have read about the Middletown parties? My son and his friends and all of my town are all in that town as well. My children are there. Do you know these children that tested positive for coronavirus? None of them are sick. None of them have a symptom. None of them have a cough, a sore throat, a fever. They just tested positive. Isn't that strange? Don't you find that odd that it made it to the national news? Odd. I find that odd. I also find it odd that when I was in intensive care, I would test people for coronavirus. On Tuesday, they would test negative on a ventilator, dying. On Wednesday, they would test positive, and then again on Friday, they would test negative. I always found that very interesting, just like these asymptomatic tests. I'm here to tell you don't be afraid of COVID. It doesn't exist in the hospitals. But what I will tell you to be afraid of is the mainstream media, because they are going to scare you to death. They are going to cause you to believe that this still exists. Does it? Maybe. I'm not an expert. I'm not standing here claiming that I am because really nobody is, right? Nobody's an expert on this. I could just tell you my experience, that I've held the hands of people that are dying, that I did FaceTime their families, but I'm there now and they're not. They're not there. People aren't being admitted any longer. They're not coming into the hospital anymore because the virulence of this virus is so minimal. Sore throat and a fever of 101 for 12 hours, okay. Are you aware that in the state of New Jersey, two children have died? My hospital converted our pediatric unit in the height of the virus to an adult intensive care unit because there were no children that had this virus that needed to be admitted. No kids. So we need to let these children get back to normal. Yes. Woo! They need to go back to school. They need to be with their friends because their healthy immune systems are going to survive this. One last note that I will say, and I'll kind of uh, say it after Dr. Schubel. You need to be in control of your own health. Yes. If I'm going to stand here in front of you, I'm going to teach you one thing. The government is not in control of your health. You are. You need to make better decisions. You need to take proper supplementation. I can give you a list of things that you should be on. I can tell you what you should take, and so can many of the doctors that are standing behind me. We're fully aware that maintaining your health comes from within. So please, please turn off your televisions. Please eat properly. Please take the proper supplementation because there is no reason for this lockdown. Thank you. Woo!